good afternoon, Dr. David. Thank you so much for joining mm-hmm. us uh, at the Salon for this prestigious conference uh, mm-hmm. for you here. Said it is for me, Decori Proteo, it's a protein for new species. And now, uh, let's start with the most important thing which uh, every lab investigator faces uh, funding mm-hmm. as well as. Uh, uh let's say monumental challenges which mm-hmm. you are faced in your research and uh more importantly how do you devise unique strategies to work on that right right look i think um we are all there will there are always challenges to everything we do right and i think there is um the most nervous moments that i experience are when you really go out on a on a on a research question without understanding where this is going to lead you know where you really you know you enter something new and in a way this was at the very start of my career i didn't know if these ideas would actually work right they were just ideas and it took you know some time to implement this but then once you you can sort of hope always to overcome these challenges often it's a lot of hard work often it's very clever people to work with right and i think and it's a lot of it is connection as well right you really need to have more influences advice from multiple things and 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 people around you um and sometimes this doesn't need to be scientists you know sometimes it can be from other areas of life or mentors and 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 yeah so uh, actually you know uh, there is a huge you know like uh, there is uh, let's say a huge light now mm-hmm. if you say uh, the last four decades have been very nice for us in the tech mm-hmm. sector and yeah. that meltdown is now affecting different areas yes. uh-huh. particularly science and research yeah. uh, you have floated company start right and all those things Uh, how did you manage the finances so actively that you were able to allocate funds and no. trying to see uh, get it? No, because you know, no, it's a, a great question. Yeah. As a, as a, uh, you know, uh, a team leader, mm-hmm. the fiscal management and prudence is also equally very, very important. Yes, when yes. you are dealing with. Uh, like say out usually uh, the serendipitous observations happen when you go out of your zone yes, of effort. Yes, yes, yes. So you you are at the risk of exposure, you are at the risk of infamy and yeah. all those kinds yes, of things and yes. yet you still try that maybe this one right. piece of mm-hmm. uh, knowledge might change my entire life. Yes, yes, yes. So have you ever faced I'm sure as a, a team leader in PA your fifth loss and of uh, situation. How what was the innovative approach because we want uh, leaders like you to set examples for these uh, new generation right. of PIs yes. who might actually what would be your simple takes in these things right i think um it's a, it's a it's very context dependent right it always depends on the situation but in in my view i think the number one situation is um you want to have balance of risky things with things which are a little bit more predictable everything is inherently risky but ideally you want a situation where you are um having a little bit of both so you may right? say you divide your projects into bread and butter projects which keep the lab going uh, and then, then yeah you are by the loot still thinking about uh, yeah. you know moving into allocating some small portion for risk care projects that is for that results right. can be balanced at both yeah as it's, and i think often case we have the situation now that the grant funding mechanisms are so slow that you are already bringing in everything you have to the grant and by the time you get the money you have already done the work right so that's in a way um not ideal and i think this is where the grant system is is broken um where i in in europe for example you were able to get money on ideas without preliminary data without you know any kind of proof that it might work but if the idea was good enough and you had a track record as well then you were able to um get very nice pots of money access to very uh, significant funding to establish this now i'm now i'm in australia and there it's very different where you know it really is all about 
do you think you can do it and why do you think you can do it right which means you need preliminary data um, very little risk and and it's very hard to get um, to get grants for just ideas that is a big challenge for us because at the end of the day we want to have um, at the end of the day we want to work on hypotheses that we want to establish and it's going to take time so uh, tell me something you just mentioned very interestingly that uh, you know in most cases there is a huge contrast between the research ecosystems in Europe yeah. and ideas big ek you money to yeah. start your research with and hopefully uh, helping you along the way now uh, considering the australian scenario mm-hmm. uh, you said so how do this uh, uh, this corporate sector csrs which they say and also the startup funding yeah. mechanisms and all, how do you think they are conducive don't they put a lot mm-hmm. of pressures to put like you talked about the basic you know bread and butter yeah. projects which i probably quite yes, yes, yes. and of course the risky ones how much risk do you think it can a pi afford to right. uh, especially in startups because there either you hit the top of the bar as we say credit yeah, 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 or yeah. you uh, you have to check single run keep on it those ball to it no i get it i i i think the so i i, I for me scientific grants uh you have to distinguish scientific grants between uh, um from academic from from grants that lead to company creation right that's a that's a very big distinction and in fact that creates a lot of issues if too much of your focus is on the translation potential and the, the company creation right that is another really big balance because the company work is not a is is unable to help your academic record right, right? and what i think is now happening also in australia and and i think this is something that should happen everywhere is that we need better mechanisms to recognize when people take a risk and especially when they take a risk for company creation to actually translate their findings so that recognition is typically very unacademic right and um you know what do you get recognized for is it a patent is it the fact that you are able to you know as the lead question yes, is yes. coming like as a team lead when you're looking at company creation as one end of the spectra and yeah. then uh let's say uh saving your page cry i yeah. have used this word in yeah. a larger context yeah. like, you know uh when we talk about saving your page cry at what time uh, at what point in the research do you take that judicious decision that okay this one seems going more yeah. translational and do you have in your tick tank uh, some kind of a financial person right, right, who right, helps right. you arrive at the decision yeah. fact you know because uh, honestly i mean whether it's a sad fact that we in the finances also govern the way of the research is do yeah. and financial prudence and fiscal prudence yeah. so of the author of the dick what would be your take home message for this new pis and all the same because here yeah, people are the young pis i've seen here mm-hmm. uh, since we are established a new unit yeah uh they are more uh, extremely uh, i would say passionate about the yes. work mm-hmm. do not want to let go and i think lose focus that what need to go where right 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 now oh, i think this is a very important aspect um again i'm not so much interested in the financials because the financials are just a given right if you need to do the experiment the proof of concept experiment that nails down the next question in your project whether it's academic or translational then that question needs to be asked and it needs to be funded right if you can't if you don't have some money to do the important experiment to show you can hit a milestone or to show you can hit a particular proof of concept you know in vivo proof of concept for example then you can't you, you don't you can't breathe right so but i think the the importance and i think that's a problem between academic science and translational science like biotech science is the is a focus on what question to ask next as an academic i do everything i immediately think big out of the box and i have immediately you know um i want to do this and this and this and this and this and my people they start to do all of these things and i love it we can go this direction this direction the key thing you need to have for company creation is a path 
and one track, a focus. And that is very unacademic. And that's unfortunately what you need to bring to the, what you need to bring to the table. So uh, to, to learn that and to teach that is very, very hard. So that is why many of the biotech, right. that's why many of the biotech people and, and biotechs don't like academics, right? It's like, that's, that's really important to, 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 to be able to do both. And advisors are the key.